Now at five, severe thunderstorms are rolling through the region. I'm going to have the latest on that coming up. Plus, we'll check out flooding issues impacting the city of Miami and how the city of Miami is trying to make up for a loss of revenue at the municipal pool. The four states most watched news starts now. We are keeping an eye on some storm systems working through the area. This is KOAM News at 5. I'm Tanya Bach, and we're going to go straight to Chief Meteorologist Doug Hetty for the latest. Yeah, we're not going to have a widespread severe weather tonight. We just have a couple cells which are popping up. The ones that are popping up are going to be very powerful and are going to have the chances to rotate or produce a tornado. We've already had one confirmed tornado back across northern parts of Wilson County. Even a little bit of damage has been reported. We still have a tornado warning, so this is northern parts of Neosho and southern parts of Allen County. And then we have another cluster, which are severe thunderstorm warnings moving into Nawada and also Craig County. So we want to watch these. These are all really firing up along a dry line, but you can see a second cell just south of Yates Center. I really want to see what these two guys do as they push off toward the north and to the east. It's a little bit more stable once you get south of I-44, but you can see the track. So here are the hail cores northeast at about 25 to 30 miles per hour. Let's zoom in to this cell. This is south of Biola. Now we're still getting rotation, oh, I'd say about four or five miles southeast of Humboldt. I just saw a picture of it. It's a lowering, it's a wall cloud, uh, but nothing on the ground right now. But still, you want to take shelter if you live just southeast of Humboldt. And if you live in Moran or Ellsmore, you definitely want to keep your eyes on this cell. Very big hail core. We're getting ping pong size hail in this cell. If you live in Chanute, you are now in the clear of this cell. Let's track a little farther south. Severe thunderstorm warnings working into Nawada County, also into Craig County. For the Joplin Metro and Pittsburgh too, we want to watch these because these are going to push into an environment that is very unstable. Northeastern Oklahoma, southeastern parts of Kansas. So those cells, as they push in, will have the chance to rotate. So we need to pay attention as we go through the next few hours. After 8 o'clock tonight, we're good. Severe threat returns tomorrow. We'll have more details here in just a bit. All right, thanks, Doug. And check out this video of the storm sent to us by Sarah Wilson. She says it comes from the south edge of Fredonia, Kansas. Now, if you have photos or videos from these storms, send them to the KOAM Facebook page. Well, the rain got so heavy in parts of the area, it flooded roads. One driver near Carthage didn't heed the barricades, warning of high water and needed to be rescued. The driver was uninjured, but was ticketed since driving around such barricades is illegal. The car will remain there until the water recedes. City officials across the four states are preparing for potential flooding throughout this weekend. Officials in Miami say they're expecting to see rising water levels in the area. The city is known to experience flooding. Miami officials say they're expecting the Neosho River to potentially rise by 16 to 21 feet. So you do have some low lying areas, some uh, roadways that flood uh, and just any any low areas that, that may prone to flash flooding are going to get wet. And we do have a couple highways that have low areas that uh, are, are subject to flash flooding. And you know, we want everybody to be safe. If, if the roadway is flooded, don't drive through it. Be safe. Tonight at six, we'll have more details on how officials across the four states are working to keep you safe. Well, the city of Miami is looking at future plans for the municipal swimming pool at Riverview Park. The pool was built in the 1930s and was relined two years ago for $200,000. Now, regular flooding of the park has also caused damage to the pool and its pumps, costing the city thousands of dollars every year. City Council approved a plan to increase admission prices to make up some of the cost. As far as the parties go, we brought our parties, uh, party rates in line with our, the parties are going to be during business hours. So we brought from $270 down to $200 because they'll be going during uh, business hours um, rather than having them after hours. So they'll be during our regular staffed hours. City plans to open the pool by May 25th. The council also heard a plan for potential $10 million aquatic center though nothing is decided on that yet. 
First witness in the former president Donald Trump historic criminal trial in New York completed his testimony after several days on the stand. Bradley Blackburn reports from New York. Former President Donald Trump returned to court Friday afternoon after defense attorneys finished cross-examining former National Enquirer publisher David Pecker. Trump's lawyer tried to cast doubt on Pecker's credibility, questioning his memory and trying to make him seem inconsistent. During his days-long testimony, Pecker explained how he and Trump's former lawyer, Michael Cohen, worked together to catch and kill negative stories about Trump during his 2016 presidential campaign. Trump denies any wrongdoing. It's a rip trial. Terrible. Trump faces 34 felony counts of falsifying business records. Prosecutors allege he funneled so-called hush money payments through Michael Cohen to adult film star Stormy Daniels before the 2016 election. I personally think they've got an uphill battle. They would have the jurors believe that simply an agreement to influence the election with this catch and kill practice is in and of itself illegal, but it's not. They're going to have to go the extra step of proving that federal campaign finance law violation. Trump's former executive assistant, Rona Graff, was the next witness to take the stand. During his testimony, Pecker said he saw Graff handing invoices to Trump, which he'd review and sign. Earlier, the former president shared other complaints about the proceedings. It's very cold in there. For one purpose, I believe. And he expressed frustration that the trial is keeping him from celebrating his wife Melania's birthday. Bradley Blackburn, CBS News, New York. We'll be right back. All right, guys, I wanted to give you an update on our severe weather. Still tornado warning, so this southern parts of Allen County. So we are looking between Ellsmore and Moran. You can see this hail core. So this is ping pong upwards to golf ball size hail, which is going to push right between Moran and Ellsmore. But we still have a lowering about two or three miles west of Ellsmore. So if you live in Moran, Ellsmore, go ahead and take shelter as this storm passes by over the next 10 to 15 minutes. I'll have a whole bunch more details of what's going to happen here in just a bit. All right, thanks, Doug. Topping today's Health Watch, a study of bivalent COVID vaccines found they are effective at controlling the spread of the virus. A study in Brazil found the bivalent vaccine, which targets multiple strains of COVID, boosted the immune response and was more effective than monovalent vaccines, which only target one strain. It's estimated that one in 10 older Americans has valvular heart disease, but it is often missed during a routine exam. And now a new stethoscope using artificial intelligence is helping doctors detect valve problems before they become more serious. Dr. Malika Marshall has more. 74-year-old Greg McLean has no history of heart valve problems, but his doctor is using new technology to make sure. Before Greg left the house, his wife asked what would happen if they found something. We have discussed it, but it's a good thing, isn't it, if we catch something before it becomes too late. Normally blood flows from one heart chamber to another passing through little doors called valves that open and close. But if there's a problem with one of the valves, blood flow becomes turbulent, causing a whooshing or raspy sound called a murmur. Only about 40 percent of murmurs can be detected during a physical exam by a clinician with a regular stethoscope. But this new stethoscope and this new technology is changing that. It's called an AI-enhanced stethoscope, and it transmits sounds from the patient's heart to an iPad or smartphone. The AI analyzes the sounds, and it tells you there's any murmurs or not. An ongoing study involving more than 350 patients over 50 with risk factors for heart disease finds when it comes to detecting murmurs, this new stethoscope is twice as effective as a standard one. I'm excited because this study demonstrated that using an AI-enhanced stethoscope will lead to early detection of valvular heart disease and eventually improving outcomes in our patients. While the technology is promising, Dr. Moshe Rancier says it's not a substitute for a clinician's physical exam. As for Greg... As you can see, Greg, there's no murmurs detected. Good. And I concur with the findings. So Thank you. Good. Which means Greg can return home to his wife Thank with greater so peace of mind. Dr. Malika Marshall, CBS News, Lawrence, Massachusetts. That's a look at today's health news. A little later, we'll check out a retirement party for a Columbus, Kansas healthcare worker after 30 years of service. Uh, and we're going to be covering all of our severe weather coming up next.
Well, of course, we're dealing with showers and thunderstorms. Severe weather has been ongoing for the past couple hours, mainly on the Kansas and the Oklahoma side. And that's where we have a tornado watch in effect. So this is southeastern Kansas, northeastern parts of Oklahoma uh, in the purple. This is our tornado watch, and it does include Bates County just north of Nevada. In the yellow, these are severe thunderstorm warnings, northeastern Oklahoma. A new tornado warning now. This is for Bourbon County on the Kansas side. So including Fort Scott, Uniontown, those are the areas that are kind of under the gun. So the setup today is supercells. So we had morning storms pushing east, and then we have a dry line back toward the west. So along that dry line, we're getting these individual supercells which are popping up. We're not gonna have a lot of storms, but if you're stuck underneath one of these guys, they are gonna have the chance to rotate. So we're watching this one very closely, and then these two guys down across northeastern parts of Oklahoma as they push into southeastern Kansas and also the metro. Let's go ahead and take a tour. You can see uh, the little blue diamonds. Those are our storm tracks of the direction these storms are going and our hail core. So here's the hail core. Looks like the heaviest hail is going to push right on the north side of Fort Scott. Let's go a little bit farther south. We have a hail core pushing into Lebec County and then right on top of Anita and then eventually into Ottawa County. Let's look at this cell. This is our tornado warning. I've been, uh, there's a lot of storm chasers on it, so I'm getting pictures of it. And right now it's a lowering, a wall cloud, funnel cloud, nothing on the ground. But this did produce a tornado back farther toward the west and northern parts of Wilson County. You can see in the purple, this is our hail core, Ellsmore, here's Moran, here's Uniontown. Hail core is going to push on the north side of Uniontown, and our rotation now is on the east side of Ellsmore. So this is pushing east, northeast. So if you live in Fort Scott, if you live in the small town of Freedom, even up toward uh, Pleasanton, you kind of want to watch this cell as it continues to push east. Uniontown, go ahead and take shelter. Fort Scott, get close to taking shelter. Again, it's a funnel cloud nothing on the ground, but still it could produce a tornado on the ground. Let's go back here. Let's go back a couple slides here. And then these cells, um, the environment's a little bit more unstable here and here in northeastern Oklahoma. So we want to watch those two guys very closely. And looks like south side of Tulsa, another one has developed as well. So a lot to watch as we go through the next few hours. Plus severe weather sticks around as we go through the weekend. All we got to do is get through the next couple hours. By 7 p.m., we look pretty good. We're going to calm down. Most of tomorrow is going to be dry. It's actually going to be a pretty nice day until we get into the afternoon hours. Then watch the supercells. Here we go again. So we're looking 3, 4 p.m., Kansas, Oklahoma side. These are going to be much more widespread tomorrow. High severe weather threat as these guys push in. The main threat is going to be hail, wind, and tornadoes. So we're looking at 7 p.m. Saturday evening. Storms continue through the evening. Uh, this is going to be a very long severe weather event lasting seven, eight, nine hours. Here's 10 p.m. tomorrow evening. Intense storms from Parsons all the way down toward Nawada pushing through the metro. We're after midnight now, so we're into early Sunday morning. And then finally, our severe threat drops by three or four o'clock on Sunday morning. Bad news is it returns on Sunday afternoon as well. So we got a ton to watch as we go through the next couple days. But as of right now, we're mainly watching this guy, which is still a funnel cloud, but enough to warn a tornado warning. Ellsmore over toward Fort Scott. Make sure you take shelter. All right. A lot to keep track of right now. That's for sure. It is. All right. <laughs> so, and you're doing a great job. Well, Thanks, thank Doug. You. <laughs> All right. Well, a Columbus woman is retiring after spending 50 years in the medical field. 30 of those years she spent at Mercy Hospital of Columbus. Coworkers, family and friends all came out to attend and celebrate Marilyn Thompson's retirement. And we'll be right back. Topping today's Consumer Watch, TikTok's Chinese parent company said it will not sell the social media platform as a United States ban looms. ByteDance denied plans to sell after reports surfaced it was exploring the sale of TikTok's U.S. business without the algorithm that recommends videos to users. 
This is the first official response from the Beijing based company on the issue since President Joe Biden signed a bill that could lead to a nationwide ban. TikTok CEO said the company would fight in the courts to stay online in the U.S. Federal safety regulators are looking into whether Tesla has done enough to address issues with its self-driving feature. Elon Musk, all-electric car company, issued a massive recall to fix a reported safety threat posed by its autopilot software. Tesla's auto steer is meant to be used with a fully attentive driver. The recall applied to essentially all the Teslas on roads in the U.S. From water to sports drinks, beverage companies are adding healthy ingredients and promising to do more than quench your thirst. Now, the same idea is being served up behind the bar. Ian Lee reports. All of these herbs, spices, and mushrooms are being served up in a bottle. Non-alcoholic drinks packed with promises, some giving you a kick, others made to mellow you out. We try and create drinks that can fit into these social occasions, which alcohol has traditionally serviced for a long, long time. Got a couple of ingredients. Three Spirit is a company on the frontier of functional drinks, giving consumers a natural beverage to change their mood without the hangover. So they can help you feel a bit more relaxed in stressful situations, or they can help raise your metabolism to give you more energy. Their most popular, called Nightcap, made with valerian root, lemon balm, and hops, helps you wind down. So it's a slow sipper at the end of the night, and it makes a real mean, old-fashioned style drink. I like the complex flavors. It really is not what I expected. Creating functional beverages is a growing industry. A low to no alcohol market analysts estimate is worth more than $13 billion globally. Alcohol free is early days. Functional is at really, really earlier days. At London's Club Soda, Laura Willoughby guides people through her shelves of designer drinks. Some offer an alternative to beer, others give a twist on favorite cocktails. Having functional ingredients in your drink allows people to think they're gaining something. Something other than a headache. Just knowing that it's got some added benefits that mean that, that you could go out to the pub with your mates and come out healthier. How amazing is that? Letting people drink to their health in a healthy way. Ian Lee, CBS News, London. Well, final check of the forecast is next. The CBS Evening News, Steve Hartman goes on the road with two police officers and their incredible connection beyond the badge. And then on KOM News at 6, we'll have more on the flooding issues impacting Miami in the wake of all this rain. Plus, a local church hosts its carrying closet surplus sale. And Pitt State hosts its spring football game. We're going to check it out. Stay with us for the CBS Evening News and then KOAM News at 6. Doug has a final check of the weather. All right, so we still have a tornado warning. This is Bourbon County, so this is Fort Scott area. And then out to the West Uniontown, our rotation. I've been looking at pictures. We have storm trackers on it, uh, storm chasers, and right now it is a pretty defined funnel cloud. It's not on the ground, but it can drop on the ground. If you live in Uniontown, go ahead and take shelter. Fort Scott, keep your eyes on this guy. Also, another guy is building behind it, which is kind of interesting, near Iola. We have another little guy that has popped up east of Fredonia, and then we have a cluster uh, northeastern parts of Oklahoma. All this is pushing northeast. So if these guys in northeastern Oklahoma can get going, uh, like really intensify, I mean, they're already severe, but I mean, really intensify, we need to really keep our eyes on the Pittsburgh, Joplin, Neosho, Miami, Carthage, the metro area over the next hour or so. But the main concern right now is the, our strongest cell moving into western parts of Bourbon County. So uh, Fort Scott, Uniontown, go ahead and take shelter. Plus, we have more severe weather tomorrow and Sunday. So I'm going to have the latest on that on KOM News at 6. All right, thanks, Doug. Thanks for joining us. The CBS Evening News is next. And, of course, we'll be right back here for KOM News at 6. And we'll see you then. Have a great evening and an even better tomorrow.